Welcome to the last example video for chapter 10, where we look at angular momentum conservation. So in this problem, we have a person who is standing on the edge of a merry-go-round disc, so one of those flat playground kind of merry-go-rounds, uh, which is already spinning. And what this person does is they walk directly towards the center of this, uh, and they make it about halfway, and we want to figure out what happens to the angular speed, the rotation um, of this merry-go-round. So no one is actively pushing on the edge of this. There's no external torque to the system. And so with a situation where there is no net external torque, angular momentum is going to be conserved. We talk up, talked about that in the lecture video. So let's see how that works in a real problem. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to draw a before and after picture, not the specific setup for an energy problem, but just so that we know what's going on in the before and after picture. So for this person at the beginning of the problem, the initial um, information that we have is that the person is 70 kilograms, and there, I'm going to say R, zero for initial location is at the edge of a two meter merry-go-round. The merry-go-round itself, the mass of the disc is 50 kilograms and the radius of the disc doesn't change but it's two meters. What does change is that this person moves inwards. They move not to the edge anymore but about halfway so that their final location is a distance of one meter from the center instead of a distance of two meters from the center. So our big equation is that I initial times omega initial is equal to I final times omega final. Now in the problem, we are also told that the initial omega, the rotation here, the initial omega is two radians per second. So what we need to do then is we need to realize that this moment of inertia is one that we can calculate with the information that we have. The moment of inertia of the entire system has two separate components to it. It's the moment of inertia of the disk plus the moment of inertia of the person who is acting like a mass on a stick, a mass a certain distance away from the center, kind of like the particle that showed up in one of the lecture slide figures. So for a disk, we have one half big mass of the disk times big radius of the disk. And for the person, we don't have the one half term that is specific to a disk but we do have that mass times that location um, radius squared. So we have one half times the 50 kilogram, uh, 50 kilogram disc times two meters, plus we have 70 times the two meters squared. So one half times 50 times two squared is 100, and 70 times two squared is 280, and so we have 380 kilogram meters squared. That's the initial omega, oh, sorry, the initial I, the moment of inertia. So I'm gonna plug that into the equation. You should rewrite it below all of this, but as we know, um, I've, I'm working with a smaller amount of space than you are. So what we just calculated was that the moment of inertia at the beginning of the problem is 380 kilograms meters squared. And I'm gonna plug in, because we're uh, plugging in numbers at this point, that the initial angular speed is two radians per second. So if we look at this, then what we realize is that um, for this final moment of inertia, we can use a very similar process. So I'm gonna give us a chance to um, Pause the video if we're still writing down this initial angular momentum, but I'm going to erase this bottom part so I can keep going. 
okay? And I'm going to erase all of it, but we can compare which of these terms changes with the previous stuff that we'd written on our page. So the final moment of inertia here is the moment of inertia of the disk, and the disk has not changed shape, plus the moment of inertia of the person at the end of the problem, and that person has moved. So the disk is still 1 half times m r squared, and the person now is that final location uh, squared times the mass. So we still have 100 from before. I'm not going to replug in the numbers. It's still 100 for the disk. But now we have 70 times 1 squared. So we're going to have 100 plus 70 is 170 kilograms times meters squared. So when we erase this to make space for it, we're going to write... 170 here. And now this is the equation that we're trying to solve for. We realized that we had, with all this information, enough numbers to plug in to get all of these uh, values. And now the only unknown that we need to do a calculation for is omega final. So you can, um, you can plug in the numbers here. And I'm going to erase the board down below here. If we take these, all we're doing is we're dividing both sides by 170. So we have 380 times 2 divided by 170 is our final omega. And so that final omega is 4.47 radians per second. That is the new angular speed when that person walks inwards towards the center. So in a very similar way to the ice skater who has their arms outstretched and is spinning slower and then brings their arms in and is spinning faster, we should expect a number where we are rotating faster because that mass has moved inwards. It is now easier to, to rotate that object. The other thing we are asked, though, is to find the rotational kinetic energy before and after. So the kinetic energy of rotation before is one half the initial moment of inertia times the initial angular speed squared. So we have one half 380 times two squared. So that amount of energy is 760 joules. And the, the kinetic energy of rotation at the end of the problem is the final moment of inertia times the final angular speed squared. So we have 1 half times 170 times 4.47 squared. And we get uh, 1,700 when I round up 1,699 to 1,700 joules. Now look at this situation here. We can't have used energy conservation because the trackable energy we have here, the kinetic energy of rotation, is not conserved. Where did all of that extra energy come from? If we think about this person, it, it took some effort. It took a work term for them to use their muscles to move inwards towards the center of this disk, which means they added energy to the system. They took the energy of the breakfast they had that morning and they turned it into kinetic energy of rotation. We have um, a couple of links in the posted PDF slide that are worth clicking on. You can also um, look up uh, merry-go-round physics videos uh, on your own and see a couple more of these where you can actually see the difference as people work to um, move 
inwards for a uh, merry-go-round like this, they do actually rotate faster like we expect. And then they can walk back out and it goes slower again. So with this problem, we did the moment of, in or the moment of inertia calculations where there's no external torque here, but the object that we're looking at, person plus merry-go-round, does change shape. And that's the kind of problem that we might see um, in assignments and assessments. And we revisited kinetic energy from the previous section of this chapter to make sure we recognize that we can't use energy conservation for things like this because there's a work term that we don't have the resources to be able to, um, to, be able to track with our Physics 125 understanding. So as always, you can rewatch this video or any of the other ones in Chapter 10, and I will see you in the next chapter.